In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the beginning, man sought to take for himself that which was already his. He wanted to be like God. He was already made in the image and likeness of God. He was fashioned by the very hands of God. And so, in eating from the, knowledge, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam, in fact, lost that which had been given. For he becomes unlike God. For God is the God of the living, and Adam, in eating, becomes one of the walking dead. The curse given to the serpent is that the seed of woman will crush his head. What is bad for the serpent is good for you. Far better, in fact, than Adam could imagine. For this seed is God who becomes bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. It is Gabriel who fills out this promise when he notes that the Holy Spirit will come upon Mary, and that which is conceived in her is holy, the Son of God. He is the image of the invisible Father, bearing the visible image of a slave. For he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. He walked through this valley of death, the only one truly living that we might live. Tonight we hear that Elijah gets a speed pass of sorts through that valley. Elijah knew what was about to happen. Elijah was about to die, to be taken from him. Yet he would not be taken from his master's side. Though three times Elijah attempted to put him by the way, Elijah wanted to be there with Elisha, Elijah at the end. A noble desire, one that should encourage us all as we look on our loved ones in the face of their death. Elijah does get what he wants, he gets to be there. But he also asks Elijah for one other thing. A double portion of the spirit. Elijah's spirit. Elijah in response says, Sure, if you see me taken up. But is this really a gift that Elijah can give? For it is God who gives and God who takes away Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it is, in fact, God, then, who blesses with the Spirit, whether that be Elijah or Elisha. Elisha does see Elijah taken up into heaven, and the Father places upon him the Spirit. Look at what he does. The same things that Elijah was doing. He takes Elijah's cloak and the waters part for him. All of this is giving us a picture of the ascension which is to come. For there is one who is greater than Elijah. And yet, it is only a dim picture. For that which was to come was so different than what Elijah himself experienced. Certainly, Elijah faced death threats and persecution, but he never had to lay down his life. He did not have to face the pangs of death, nor the encompassing cords of Sheol. He just ascended into heaven to be there with the Father, with his Father, his God. 
Not so the only begotten Son of the Father. In addition to lies and persecution and violence breathed out against him, he had to endure the beatings and the crucifixion. But it is all for you. So it is that Jesus, who was crucified and buried, rose again on the third day, and as we heard this evening, ascended 40 days later into heaven. And he does so to assure you that just as he was raised by the Father from the dead, so too shall you be raised. Just as he has ascended to where the Father is, so shall you ascend. And yet, what is the response to all of this? Look at the disciples tonight. So timid, so uncertain, struggling with unbelief. And yet when Jesus confronts them, according to the gospel writer Mark, he does not cast them out and replace them with a better group of 11. Somebody who's stronger, able to stand within the persecution, as if they could do so in and of themselves. No. Jesus knows their every weakness, their every failing their every sin. And he rebukes them. It is not a stern and harsh rebuke. Instead, it is one done in love. One that calls them to repent and to believe. He directs them to go into the world preaching the gospel to all the creation. Not just Jews or just Gentiles, but to all people. Not just slave or just to the free, but to everyone. Regardless of parentage or past, regardless of failure or success, they are to preach the good news of Christ. As Jesus prepares to ascend into heaven, the disciples could very well ask him, for the same thing that Elisha asked for, a double portion of the Spirit. But there is no need. Jesus has already promised to give his Holy Spirit. He repeatedly told them that he would send to them the Comforter, the Paraclete, the Helper, the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. The one who would bring forth the bold and faithful confession from cowards and deceivers. The one who gives that same spirit to us. Who know their every weakness and have failings of our own. Jesus does not make the giving of this spirit conditional. If you see me ascend into heaven, then yes, you can have the Holy Spirit too. No, he is the giver, sending forth his spirit, who will come upon them. Oh, we're back to the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. For in that beginning, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and a child was conceived within her. And now the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples and many others who were with them, who believed in Christ being raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. And he, the Holy Spirit, brings forth from their mouths the faithful confession, even as he strengthens them in the faith. Mary knew no man, and yet a child was conceived within her. The disciples, well, in unbelief they knew no faith. And yet what was conceived within them? Faith. Faith within them, faith within you. Stony hearts made new, alive, alive through Christ. 
So it is that in these disciples, we see the restoration of the lost image of God as he brings forth not only the faith which trusts his promises, but also true life. For the one who is the resurrection and the life resides within them. O oh, beloved of our Lord, our brother has ascended into heaven. And though on the surface this may seem initially to be bad news, for that's the way I take things when we're parted, like my dear wife whenever she must be parted from our children, shedding a tear for those few days that we might be apart from them, or perhaps you too. But our brother has ascended, and it is good news. For though he confessed that his kingdom is not of this world, even now he who reigns in heaven exercises authority over earth. He is mightily ordering all things for our eternal good. It is for us, for our salvation that he orders our days and, his, and our deeds in his peace. Our brother has ascended into heaven, and this is good news. For he who is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh is also truly divine. And he continues then to come to us, to forgive us, to guide us, to strengthen us, so that we might live, live within his promises, looking forward to the day of the everlasting fulfillment of these things. But even now, he promises he is with us to the end of the age. Our brother has ascended, and this is good news. For he has taken our human nature and exalted it in the heavens. This is true not only for him, it is true also for you. And this news, it means that even the angels serve you. As I told Marion yesterday at her bedside, one day soon, Marion, the very angels who worship God in heaven will be the very ones who come to serve you who come to take you from this valley of sorrow to our Lord in heaven. This is what it means, that the angels who were created and are above you now come to serve you because of your brother, your Jesus, your Savior, who has ascended into heaven. And because he is there, it is quite tempting, as I told our school children this morning, just to stand and try to peer, to gaze into heaven, wondering when exactly Jesus will return. But that was the mistake of the church in Thessalonica. No, now is not the time to gaze. It is certainly right now, at this very moment, the time to rest. Rest from your labors. Receive the gifts of Christ. But that is so that you can also be strengthened. Strengthened to go forth just as the disciples did. Bringing the gospel to the creation. Beginning right in your own homes. As you speak this message of forgiveness and reconciliation to your parents. To your children to your brothers and sisters here within the church, and to those out in the rest of the world. And in this, our Lord continues to do his good work, preparing us for that day when finally the lost image of God shall be fully restored. The peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.